everyone's favorite. Now we're going to get into the, the flies. I think it's the hottest topic. You've opened a guide's fly box, they're like, oh my gosh, I got to see your box. Guides have a tendency to be real simplistic. We, we repeat and repeat and repeat till that repeat doesn't actually work. So I'm going to make this really simple because we can have an entire class just on flies, but I want to just narrow it down. So the first thing is I want you to always think about, just make it really simple, three categories. Bait fish, creepy crawlers on the bottom, and insects. If you just think of those three categories alone, it just, it, that's just a good base platform to start with because the flies that worked yesterday might not work the next day. So you always have to have an open mind. And what I do as a guide is we start getting into this is because of an extremely heavy gear background, I probably have an advantage over a 100% purist fly angler. So I can get a lot more research, fly rod research earlier in my fishing career where I applied it to my fly angling skills now. So what's really cool is, is that when you're talking about bait fish and what ones and how size like that, if you think about a bait fish, it's higher in the water column. And not that you can't go deep with a bait fish, but think about in an aspect, if you're trying to raise a fish up off the bottom, they're gonna be seeing the bottom of the fly. So a lot of times when I'm making a fly design or a fly choice, depending on water colors and things, I revert back to in my gear days, and one of the most favorite things for bass anglers is what's called a jerk bait. So I try to categorize my flies in relationship to some of the most prolific professional fishermen there are. And if you look at the belly color, you got a chartreuse belly color, the power of pink is crazy. I don't know what fish really think pink is, but pink works all the time. Then you've got, of course, you gotta try orange. Orange is probably my favorite belly color. And then also white. So if you designing bait fish colors and the fish are looking up, even though you might be matching the hatch, a lot of times we found out that it's just that belly color that they see. Maybe because of the light penetration, it could be a cloudy day or whatever. So try to design your bait fish patterns and take that little because there's always what the bottom color is. And of course, if you're when you're making your bait fish pattern colors, you can always just make them natural, stuff like that. But you know, even in your standard Murditch minnow, this is just the pink and the white like that. That's just a go-to neutral buoyant fly, but you have a little bit of pink, but it's got the white belly. And most of the time, if you stick with the white or orange belly, you're gonna be pretty good. But the main thing is if, if you're sort of in doubt, just always make sure you have that color contrast. Dark on the top, light on the bottom. Makes a nice simple rule of thumb. And then there's always the out of the box when you talk about bait fish because a lot of times it's just a color because of the water visibility. You know, you might be using like a hot color like this because you need this color. Tutti Frutti is just one of the, one of the best colors around because a lot of times it's the visibility thing. And if you see these Tutti Frutti colors, it's because, you know, if it ain't chartreuse, it's no use. But I think it's one of those deals where the fish can see it and in stained water, and if it's clear water, they can see it from farther away. So there's a lot of times you might want to experiment with that non-traditional type bait fish patterns when you're going to, other than to consider the belly thing. The next is group your bait fish patterns into a couple categories. Everybody thinks of bait fish as like, you know, maybe emerald shiner minnows, maybe thinks they're gonna be, you know, the shad. Whatever it is in your impoundment or up on the Great Lakes, we have multiple natural bait fish, white fish, but there's also probably the key component in a large body of water system, and especially on the Great Lakes, is the young of the year. It happens everywhere, even in big river systems. You know, in Alaska, you got the smolt run and the brown trout run, they're feeding on the rainbow smolt. But the same thing here, the young of the year it could be a small drum, it could be a small catfish, it could be almost any of the species here, a small yellow perch, that is food for the top of the, the predator chain. So always think of that too, whether you could categorize your bait fish, you know, it might be a young of the year little perch fly, just like this, just come and protect it in the weeds. And you might not catch the biggest fish on it, but it could be that bait fish that they're always on that little yellow perch pattern like that. It could be just the young of the year, one of my favorite bites is gonna be 
just a real small rabbit strip clouser like this, especially at the end of the season when our forage base hatches, they're really small. And you would think at that point in time, it comes around August or so, these, these small young of the year hatch, and they're all over the scatter all over the surface of the water. And it's just like a dimpling all over. And then you, all these fish that normally were hunkered down on the bottom, they start going pelagic, they start chasing it, they're blowing up on the surface on these small young in the year. So that's one of my go-tos, especially on Erie, is the Emerald Shiner Minnow Hatch, which is right around the end of July and July going into August is a pretty great bite. And that's the bait fish pattern coming down into that. It's a little simplified, we'll go a little more into it. But the next is gonna be the young of the year after that's gonna come the mayfly hatch. And this is something that occurs on the rivers, of course, but on the Great Lakes, and I'm sure in other large impoundments, you have a huge mayfly hatch. Up in Michigan and down in Lake Erie, my two home bodies of waters, Lake St. Clair and Lake Erie, we literally have to get front end loaders and vacuum cleaner leaf blowers to blow off the front of the storefronts come around the middle of June into the, into the beginning of July. And that's how many they are. So at this point in time, these fish can get really tough to catch because we're wanting them to chase, you know, the bait fish patterns. We want them to be on the bottom, but literally all the mayflies that are starting to hatch, they're just gorged with them. So this is, I think it's probably the only one time that a fly rod angler actually has an advantage over a gear angler because they're so keyed in on the insects, they're co keyed on the mayflies. And so at this point in time, just get out your hex box, get out a little teeny that. And this is when I would also line down on my tippet. We talked a little bit earlier in the class about lining down. Well, this is when I would line down. This is when I would use, you know, an intermediate line. This is, you know, I wouldn't use a sinking line, I would use floating intermediate line. These fish are coming up a little bit, they're full, they're stuffed. This is also when the carp come up and start feeding on the surface on the carcasses of the mayflies coming around. So it's a really fishy time, but my, one of my favorite things is, is during the mayfly hatch, it's probably one of the only times consistently that you can go out and you can fish poppers. Because the fish are already looking up from maybe that evening, it could be all day, but this is when you wanna go out and fish your poppers. You wanna scale your poppers down. You can scale it down a little bit and just use your smaller poppers. And then also too, that's about the same time as the damsel, the dragonfly start coming out. So between the whites and the blacks and the greens, a lot of times I'll use the blue. And that's sometimes the magic of blue works. But I found out with the mayfly hatch, it's not so much the color as it is just waiting for the opportunity when those fish are coming up and just, their, their guards down. It's almost like the cicada hatch down south. It's sometimes this mayfly hatch, the fish is guards down, and they just lose their mind and you know you can get some really good surface activity and you'll find the areas that this will be the most effective is after the hatch and during the hatch is always going to be on the windward side in some little cove where they, all these all the mayflies get pushed up into a small little cove or a little flat spot they're trapped in there the carcass, you'll see the carp on top, you're gonna to see some still trying to hatch and flutter, then you'll see the other predators come in behind it, the panfish and the bass behind it also. After the insect hatch, you have the creepy crawler section, but you also have a bait fish called the round goby. And this was brought in as an invasive species that came in from the ship ballast from the St. Lawrence Seaway up into the Great Lakes. And this round goby at first was like, you know, it's a plague, we, we gotta get rid of these things. But because it's a very soft, spiny fish, it's turned out to be like snack food. It's even turned out to be snack vittles, you know, it turns out to be the Cheerios for big brown trout up on Lake Michigan in the Wisconsin side. So it's pretty cool that this round goby that turned into be an invasive species is actually turned into about almost 90 percent of the smallmouth diet on the western end of Lake Erie. So it's changed my thought process a lot about that and then what what creepy crawlers it is. So when you're picking out the goby flies you know you're going to want to pick out and I'll show you too is that you know make sure you get a light and a dark color because they're going to get dark ones, they're going to get light ones, they're going to turn a little darker when they're spawning but gobies have a tendency to have the little just like a just because if you can take your normal scalping patterns that you use for trout yeah, fish big water up on the Great Lakes. That would be a perfect way that you don't have to go and go crazy about it.
but they do have a prolific bigger head up front big you know big pair tapering down to skinny in the back um, and you can use the little basically the smaller little gills just like you would on a sculpin pattern but make sure you have a light and a dark and the cool thing about a goby is when you're retrieving in a goby pattern is that they can't get more than 18 inches off the bottom so I had a couple in an aquarium feeding them hamburger and it was pretty cool and every night I would be feeding time at the goby pen but I noticed that they, because they have a little, no swim bar, they go boop, 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 they go up, and they got to come back down. So and realistically, when you make your strip, you always had to be within reason of the bottom. You're not going to be stripping in a stream or goby pattern and be up off the water column more than two feet. So a good tip is make sure you have good bottom contact and make sure that when you strip it, you can get pretty aggressive with your strips. But if you feel you're losing somewhere near that bottom contact, make sure you get it right back down on the bottom or close to it and then pop it back up off the bottom too, because that's the way they would naturally look. And you'll notice that when I pick goby patterns out and I'm bass fishing, that the days that are really calm out, that's when it's gonna be, the gobies are gonna to start to you know, be a little more aggressive. They might start coming out of the rocks and they're gonna be a little more active because in general, the predator fish and the game fish, when the winds aren't blowing, they're not as active. So usually at that time, fishing's gonna get a little stale. The fish are gonna be static because there's no wind. I'll go to a goby pattern and I'll try to like surgically remove those fish that are a little bit neutral in activity with goby patterns like that. It was a pretty cool tip too.